Hi there, Randy Green here. It is March 19th and we are rapidly approaching Equinox, March 20th, where uh, this is technically uh, tonight and tomorrow and then uh, bordering into Sunday because nothing is ever just a one day. It kind of goes over a period of time. And Equinox kind of begins on the 19th. Uh, more directly at six o'clock and then it, it bridges into the 20th and then it waves out so to speak on Sunday the 21st also around six o'clock and the reason why this whole six o'clock kind of thing is is because that's technically even though the sun is still on the sky then when we talk about when is sunset actually when does sunset begin and that is typically around six o'clock even though it, during winter time you say well it begins at four o'clock right but this is just some of the what you could call the um, original programming if you're kind of like I, I can't really explain it better it's just it's just that's where the night begins even though the sun is still on the sky or the sun is not on the sky what we call nighttime begins at six o'clock okay what I want to talk about is a little bit um the difficulties of what it the, the what is happening on Equinix is kind of that's where all of the whoever's on a planet is is prepping and getting ready for the the next year so as i said the 2021 begins technically begins now and what has been agreed on what will unfold within the next cycle we call a year uh, which is a solar year and a lunar year a year as well as what we call a stellar year and these are the races that are occupying our reality even though many of you have long forgotten how our solar system actually operates and this is where i am giving you a little bit of insight to what is and what isn't and and what is actually going on and what is a human and what isn't a human and today these different factions they have they are gathering together the pegasus have decided what they want to do within the next year operating within the the pegasus host field and what they want to achieve and the ones that don't want to be part of that one has left the host field they had different decisions whether how to proceed with specific uh, functionalities and modalities within the group of humans that are under what we call the Pegasus host field because it's not all of humanity. And then there is uh, what is left of what we call the old world order and technically there's not many of what we could call the settlers that were part of the regressed races. What more or less remains are the ones that we typically coop up under the military projects and what's been going on there and the grace and the androids that have been part of that system including the orion system and the negative forces that is uh, under one big umbrella called the opposition or the conglomerate and what they are deciding to do and what they are facing and how they are going to proceed and uh, now that they have paid the tribute to some of the the very old forces that they invoked a very long time ago that's part of the hundred year cycle and we can say compared to to 100 years ago where we had first world war we had the spanish flu and we had the second world war where including the depression that also unfolded between um in the 30s and and led up to what we call the second world war we could say that we have all kind of gotten out of the 100 year uh, cycle uh, uh, attribution to these uh, very old dark forces that comes every 100 years and collect what they need to collect we have kind of gotten out of this one easier this time and we can always discuss whether or not it's because the genetic composition is now so contaminated that even the, the darkest of the darkest can't use it anymore or um because, or because of these old dark forces, there are fewer of them because we can kind of say if we go 100 years back, the, the Spanish flu alone took 50, 50 million people, 50 million people. That was what died during the Spanish flu that, that, that spread as a wildfire all over the world, all over the globe. So, so things are different this time. You can say the approaching three million people that has succumbed to the coronavirus is nothing compared to how many that were taken during the Spanish flu and you can see our the extreme caution that has been taken the shutting down society the measurements that have been done and the attempt to try and counteract it the insertion of new technology and all of these kind of things is part of that picture but it's it's not 
uh, most of you with a normal human mindset, you will quickly go into your value system of what is good and what is bad. And this is good for humanity, isn't it? And all these kind of things. So, but you can't measure it in terms of your human consciousness structure and your belief systems and what you have been um conditioned into believing what is good and what is bad because it's it's all relative to what relative to which cycle relative to what type of genetic and relative to what kind of agreements and i'm not in any way forms agreeing with the the what is left of the old world order whatsoever or the new ones that are coming in or the pig as a host field or whatever because as you know, I go way beyond these hijacking races because that's technically what they are. It's it's ridiculous being part of, of meetups and council uh, agreements and all of these kind of things with races that are occupying the solar system that used to belong to other races and listening to them and what they are doing to try and preserve what they have got here, their trade systems, and what they have made their arrangements with other, what we call... Um, uh, malevolent races compared to the true human races I come from and listening to that and the whole kind of why am why I even present at these councils but this is this is how it has always been in our quadrant and it goes back to the extreme old lineages and the, the souls that used to to use that expression that used to exist within this quadrant um, dating back to before the timeline event and the earliest stages of our reality. Anyways, it is what it is. Uh, as always, I don't agree with anything and my standpoint is always clear. They kind of know it, so it just doesn't really, it's nothing new there. No matter what the fuck they put me through, I always end up saying humanity deserves to know. Humanity deserves to wake up to what they truly are, whether they are insectoid in human forms or whether they are avian in human forms or they're reptoid in human forms or whatever they are. They deserve to know what they are. They deserve to remember. They deserve to deal with whatever, whether they belong to the stellar lineages or they belong to the lunar lineages or they belong to the original solar lineages. They must understand who and what they are because technically if you say, well, well what faction were I part? of I'm part of a faction that has always worked for that that we must all do what we can to re return to the original cycles of the the true human races and the true humanoid races and the division that happened eons ago in other universes must be mended so we can all resume the original 12 lineages under the ancient ones which were a completely different setup than the one we have now so it doesn't change it doesn't change whatever comes my way i will always end up in that one and that goes with humanity as well i know waking up to a brutal reality that is very very different than what the true manchu has presented is going to be a little bit of um it's going to be a lot of things to 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 integrate and to deal with and you can say some of the things I've been going through the last four years has been all part of this whole first and foremost my own awakening process into who and what I truly am and what that took and then at the same time using me as a test person the first of many you know that one that's part of the true human philosophy so therefore it was only rightfully so that since I was here and unfortunately had got myself incarnated in the last, late, the last uh, least, well, that's difficult to say, the last stages of the 1950s and the last time we had this big discussion whether or not humanity were to wake up and the calling in of whatever who was present in our quadrant and yada yada and all these kind of things and then my demise as I talk about in the whole integration classes. I don't want to put it out here on YouTube. But that all led to whatever is going on, the whole process of, okay, we have got this one here and she will always advocate for the awakening of humanity to whatever they are and then they must learn to deal with it and and adjust and go through the, the stages of, of cognitive dissonance, of emotional dissonance and of physical dissonance and then the ones that will make it will be the ones that can return to the original cycles. It's not about preserving what is not functional, it's about continuing what is functional and what has a purpose and what will be able to live up to the standards and the principles and the rules of engagement and whatever we have within the original races of our system. It's a matter of taking an entire solar system that has been hijacked by races that fail to begin with 
and, and taken over the organic forms that were here, made them their own through different forms of re-engineering, and then make these races understand that if they want to do the transition, if they want to continue within the solar system, they must adapt to what is coming and they must change. They can't keep status quo. That They, they took down the old world order because the old world order were, were, were beginning to realize thing, this and that they had failed in many ways and forms. So there was an opportunity for a coup which they did, and they are now coming to the same realizations that they must change as well. They can't keep this status quo in the dark cycles. It's impossible because of what the dark cycles and what the dark realities and the dark parallel worlds are, have decided to do and what they, they have chosen to do within the last four years, which I also talk about in the whole integration classes. So they are now, uh, whatever remains of the regress races and the hijackers, the ones that came here under the overlords and the draconians and these kind of things, they're now between a rock and a hard place. They must adapt to what is coming, either following the, the what they came in with, following these original agreements all follow with what has been put upon them from the, the, the pigasoids and the, the humanoids where they come from and the regressed races must decide whether to stay or to leave or to go to other places where they can continue what they believe is the right approach to their evolution and what they think their evolution needs. But at the end of the day, if you kind of sum everything up, whoever is left must begin to work in alignment with, we could say, some of the concords that were made between the lunars and the stellars and the solars the last time around were during the time of Atlantis. And these are some of the things that led to some of the wars of Atlantis. I know many of you are not dipped your toes into the history of Atlantis, but a lot of stuff happened before the fall of Atlantis and what led to the fall of Atlantis. And some of these issues have been tried to be um, repaired during the military projects, the use of the different forms of genetics in the military projects, and all of these uh, projects have failed. What they were to produce, they were not able to produce. The lineages they were trying to revive have failed because of the contaminated and infected levels of the genetics they have utilized. And the matter of the fact is that, that whatever has been attempted here from the opposition that goes back to Atlantis, uh, the hijackers that goes with the regressed races and the draconians and the Draco races and all of these kind of things operating under different what we could call superior forces within the different systems, whether it's the Orion system or the Draco system or whatever system, the Niborian system, wherever they come from, they have all come to a point where they must either adjust or leave. And the adjustment will go under the Pegasus and what they are offering. And, and that was that was agreed on yesterday and what's going on there. I just listened in. It's not really of my concern. The opposition is now coming with what they want to do. And at the end of the day, uh, after we go beyond Equinox, whoever is left will follow different. There are now three different main timelines that, that they must um, um, align themselves with to continue within our system. And, and that is uh, part of some of the stuff that will happen in the years to come. Either way, the ones that are part of the Pegasus host field, they have now decided that they will do their upgrading and integration processes that technically is called an awakening within the ones they are operating with their lineages within the next two years. So that's going to be a rapid upgrade uh, in different ways and forms, whatever that means for the ones that are part of the Pegasus host field. Again, not the majority of humanity. The ones that are a part of whatever remains of the dark cycle will play out what they need to play out. The dark cycle is set to finish off in, in during 2021. So that will be there is the app and the flow and that will be the app where it withdraws to the universes it came from. They have got what they needed, what that was possible for them to take. There are not many of them left. This time around, many of what we call the dark forces that used to operate on our planet, which has been part of my work the last four years, have decided to let go and leave uh, with whatever they had left of their original genetics, returning to the systems they originally came from and then literally decided to disintegrate and cease to exist in their 
uh, three, five or third cycle of fifth dimensional forms and letting go of that one, including quite a lot of the ones from the 410 pillar. Um, what is left is the 39 pillar there. That these are typically with the Andromedan Android systems that has turned very mechanical. And you say, well, Andromeda, and I'm not talking about the Andromeda constellation, but the, the Galaxy M31. That is the hub for many of these Android races that are coming our way. And I'm here not talking about the ones from the Orion system, because that's a, another uh, timeline setting that goes with the third cycle alone and not bordering into the three nine pillar. Anyways, again, these are things that, that are just to be set out there. So you just kind of get a little bit of understanding. So with that one said, a lot of what we typically have dealt with in our system as dark forces uh, have decided to retract or subside or let go and not are they they have not seen it as what they where they could go with what they had become were were yeah, not what they wanted. So so they decided the, the other way around. And that has of course uh, first surfaced a lot of of, of all stuff that goes with the, the the new grand cycle and cleaning of the, the holographic grids within the the first and foremost the 612 pillar the 511 pillar the 410 pillar as well as the 39 pillar and it will continue going into the 28 and the 17 and once it hits the 17 pillar uh, around 2035 that will be into our reality and as always, it's not about, oh, yeah, that's that's in 20 years time. So so we've got plenty of time. No, the matter of the fact is that these races have prepared for that integration and cleanup process where our solar system will begin its its it's resetting its transition back into its original uh, composition as the fourth dimension, as the lowest point of existence within what we call the second density. And that is a lighter version than what our planet is. And no, there are no planets in our solar system that currently are in density two, they are all in density one, but they will, uh, as this happened, vibrate up and go through their different phases as the they they will the the solar system itself uh, and the different grid works that are part of the solar system will begin their transition into density two and that will of course affect whatever life forms is on this planet as well as the other planets be it organic or non-organic be it in, in this dimension or in other dimensions around the planets which are technically still density one and build upon electromagnetic energies that came from the timeline event Okay, so that was just the summing up. But what I, where I want to go with this one is that there are changes ahead of us. And whatever that means, it's, it's whether it's benevolent or good or bad or whatever, again, that's the human value systems that needs a complete roundup and expansion. And this is part of the process of humanity. And that has always been what I've been working for, the whole kind of how can I give you this information so you have a broader context to work within, as well as an understanding of the dynamics that are unfolding around you and not just using your normal human belief systems that are programs that has been put there to diminish your perception field and, and narrow down your understanding of what's going on. And then again, within sciences that are only using 4% of the type of energy that are around us, which is density one. So this is, of course, an extremely limited perception field. And, and we know that that whenever these comfort zones are breached and whatever has been occupying you on the different levels of your existence, they open up to density two that will affect your perception of reality, your psychological structure, as well as your mental capacities. And new stuff will come in, new things will be visible, New things will happen on the interior level of your existence, the inner levels, as well as eventually this will affect out the outer reality because the outer reality is is not alive in the way that you understand it, but it is animated. It is built out of different forms of energies as the density two comes in will begin to vibrate vibrate up in a different capacity and whatever is within what we typically have seen as solid matter, which is not, it's atomic energy that is mostly comp composed of emptiness and nothingness and probabilities and energy fields and quantum packages of light or uh, particle energies that, that work together to compose what you understand as matter. 
as this vibrates up and begins to work and clean its way out of the different distortion fields, we will see reality in a completely different way. <clears throat> and just so you say, just so you kind of know that when we go into what has been on the table, everything is always changing. So even though that in the beginning of the year, the dark forces played out in a certain way because they wanted to achieve certain things, they are now due to what has happened and the over the the what has been done from the higher levels of their dark wells, the, the highest level of the dark towers, as they're called, have decided you got within the two human worlds, you got the pillars within the dark forces, it's typically called towers. And as they have decided to, to dismantling their hierarchies and getting rid of whatever they had seeded into this reality and taking off, that of course forces whatever uh, within the human world as well as in the adjacent realities forces them to choose a different direction that is more in alignment with what we could say a survival of humanity on a grand scale, uh, whatever that means and whatever is possible for what we could say a system like ours to house of organic life forms. So that must be taken into consideration as well, because there's no doubt that they regressed, especially the insectoids, which I kind of, when we talk about this whole, uh, in the previous video, when, when I mentioned in the video, we must all evolve, I refer to some of the mass uh, abduction scenarios that were done with where Tim Sparks were part and, and all of these humans sitting in front of screens having this what we call vision induction technology at them in, at the same time also getting a tube, they had tubes connected to them as in lifting their, their awareness up to a heightened state. Typically, this is this is actually typically something similar to ayahuasca or LSD, which is very unfortunate So people that have been part of these projects they have they have a weakness for the ayahuasca already and are doing it inside this reality as well. Anyways, that was just a little bit of side remark there, but the or addiction to cannabis and these kind of things because they're already part of these these heightened. Um, types of, of infusions when they, they are being pulled in anyways that's part of the whole the, the the military labs that are going on underground that are part of our reality they use it that way whereas when you are on board crafts you don't need that one because the, the the energies are altered and therefore you're in the fourth dimension and you vibrate up to be able to be in the fourth dimension which gives this expanded awareness naturally so this is the difference between what you can see, the ones that are pulled into to, uh, laboratories or or science labs or what you call um, bases under the military projects that are run by humans and the ones that are actually run by extraterrestrials. So there's a huge difference in the modality and the, the, the means of operation that are going on there. So this is kind of how you can see the more human like it is, the more you can be sure these are humans that are doing it. But they have to re revisit their their ways of doing this. What I wanted to go with there is kind of all of these people that were sitting there looking in, oh, you're destroying the world and all focusing on the rainforest and you're destroying your environment and all these kind of things. I have a slight suspicion that the humans that were adopted, these lineages, so so to speak, first and foremost, some of them go back to the, the, the hybrid projects, the earliest ones, which are the mammal organic life form um, uh, crossing, crossbreeding that happen, not breeding as in kind of breeding through genital uh, inbreed, but by through, of course, in vitro uh, um, test tubes made uh, within a holographic merging of different forms of DNA because technically aliens do not have sex. This is some of the mammal features that we have got in this mammal form that we have, which were, were engineered that way because then it would be a self-sustaining, self-producing race, so to speak, and didn't have to have this alien intervention producing the organic forms as it's very common in these failed systems. They they don't produce through uh, sex or intercourse. They produce through technological means, and that is both time consuming. And many of the races that started these uh, as part of the old world or hadn't hadn't are not around all the time. They come in through in different cycles and in, in different. Um, 
circumstances and again follows different openings and closing of the original gate system. So they're not around all the time. So they just needed a race that would reproduce itself, so to speak. That in a Neanderthal bipedal kind of humanoid, uh, humanoid that were grown into the, the majority of what we understand as humans. Anyways, that seeded back. It was not that way before the hijacking 15,000 years ago. And I know this is mind boggling for many of you, but I explained that in some of my previous videos. But I think personally, the lineages that were drawn in, which Jim Sparks referred to, all the ones with the environmental stuff, which is also mentioned in the the John E. Mack book, uh, a Passport to the Cosmos, as well as a lot of the hybrid projects, the hybrid children, they have a very, very high level of insectoid genetics attached to them. So these are part of the insectoid races, the ant people, the dragon moth, the the, um, the mantids that are on top of that that food chain, as well as some of the, the white um, uh, moth kind of things, the ones that the night flyers that are kind of ruling on a different lineage of that one, the white Orion, that's an older, elder strand that is not really uh, very predominant anymore, but it's actually technically also there. Anyways, these are some of the very old insectoid races that have been part of our planet for quite some time. And they have, of course, their human lineages within our system, aside from all of the insects that are around and which they prefer to be be part of, but they still need someone to produce the genetics that they are utilizing their original insectoid form in adjacent realities. And this is where humans come in. But there are also the insectoids that have kind of decided and chosen to go in and become part of the human form. And this is where I will refer a little bit to the movie Men in Black 1 and 2, where you kind of have have this secret government um, agency that is controlling that all of the different races that are on our planet are actually working well together and are abiding to the rules that have been made by the military projects and the ones that have been part of these military projects going back to Atlantis. Uh, um, and their division of our reality field and who can be allowed to do so, and who is exceeding their commission and, and what they are allowed to do. And I think some of this this uh, mass abduction has been all about, especially the ones with that were set in front of monitors to, to and got the message, you are ruining your planet, you are destroying it, you're polluting it. Many of these people that are having that behavior, they have a high level, a high percentage of insectoid genetics. And the question is are these people actually insectoids in human form and that's why they got this message as in kind of yeah you have exceeded what you are allowed to do here and you are now destroying the planet for the rest of us so either you adapt and you you fold in and you do what you're supposed to do get back in line or you are exported or you have lost your commissions or you must leave or whatever is going to happen with that one. So that's a little bit interesting, especially because we know that these races that are controlling our planet, they have the technology to clean up the environmental issues overnight if they wanted to. So this is something else. It's not about humans destroying the world. It's about the different races that are operating in the human form that is destroying the world. And that's the new new way you need to, to conceptualize what it means to be human. I want to build a little bit up on that case as well as uh, I was just looking into one of my old healing books because those of you who go far back with me you remember that I used I'm, I'm aside from my bachelor in theology and my whole business uh, educational level which were at the beginning of my life I chose to become a psychotherapist um, 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 professional psychotherapist to work as a counselor uh, for, for 10 years and at the same time I also educated myself or got the education when we say educating myself that's a Danish expression but I got the professional education going to certified healers where I learned to evoke or activate my healing abilities and at the same time I also read different forms of material the, the Bailey material for instance as well as um, Barbara Ann Brennan, which uh, she has created a book called Hands of Light. And that is something I read on my own 
following up on the professional education I paid for. I got the certificate. I took the exams. Just so you understand, this is not me making up educations. When I say I educated myself, it means I took several educations. I took anatomy and philosophy, uh, and anatomy and physiology. Got my exam on that one. So I got all the requirements of the Danish system that allows you to work as a professional healer. So I took that as well. I got the certificate. I got the, 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 the stamp in my book as in, in, in my resume that I was allowed to do healing work. So just so you understand, so professional psychotherapist com, uh, combined with professional um, uh, healing uh, education. So I was uh, certified as a professional healer. And I worked with that for, for quite quite a lot of time. And I want to, those of you who want to do this whole, what, what book could you go to if you want to learn about healing and doing the classical healing modality that went with New Age and the whole chakra system and what was part of the old world order, the, the, the Barbara and Brennan book. And that material will give you a lot of good ideas of how to actually work with yourself and do the self-healing. So I just want to put it in there. But I also want to be critical about it because when we talk about these, the, the material that came in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, they were infantile and naive, uh, to, 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 to put it the best way. They also had different purposes and different factions behind them. And uh, whenever I read the different authors, I can always see what faction has been behind and who has actually done this and cloaked it in what we call spirituality, because spirituality has been used for many of these different alien races to operate inside our reality. First, it was religion. Then it has been the science you know of. It's been the Truman Show, which is the base program. And then it's also been spirituality, which is also which um, you will figure out as you work your way out of your naive understanding of things and begin to, to become more scientifically oriented and learn to read information systems. You will see that this is these are programs that have been utilized for a specific purpose. Many of the healers of the 80s and the 90s, they were having all these quote unquote guides and they had all of these the things that helped them. I refer to the one I had called Mirac and, and they have these stellar names and they appeared as a Yoda kind of figure or whatever. And that's a holographic overlay. If you tear that one off, you will typically see an insectoid, an ant people, uh, which is from the ant people. Quite a lot of them have, as I talked about, been part of the, the healer lineages there are insectoids or you have grays that belongs to some kind of fifth dimensional race or whatever it is so they could put their human specimens under the hands of these healers that were educated to work with the different fields of the energy system so this is where we need to be critical as well because what did, did these spirituality systems teach you aside from the chakra system they were always in this kind of color version which is so far from the original chakra system teachings that goes back to, to the Hindus and the Gurus and the old Brahmin teaching system that goes back to Atlantis as well how the chakras were originally made and, and what the, the sounds of them were the symbol of them were again each chakra had its symbol that were putting out a specific vibration affecting the emotional field and the mental field as well as the etheric field or the bio field. And this is if you go back to the earlier chakra uh, teaching systems, you will see that it is so far from whatever the new age came up with, with the whole rainbow color kind of thing, taking a little bit from here and there and then brewing it together into what the most of what you understand is spirituality and <clears throat> the chakra system, as you know of it, being adaptable to the frequencies of light, hence the different colorations, whereas the original chakra system were all about invoking specific symbols, specific sounds that goes with the original creational language of Brahma that will then allow certain devas or entities to be activated and connected to your energy system. And this is where we need to go a little bit into the understanding Understanding of okay, what is the etheric field? What is the the emotional field that borders into the astral field and the under the the subconscious? What is the mental field that borders into higher? Um, realities where there live where the energies goes into what we understand as density to what is behind that 
And the problem begins when you work with this one, as in you can do, for instance, uh, the, the Baylor material, Cosmic Fire. You have this understanding of who is actually operating within the etheric field. There are, these are typically the lunar petris. These are typically uh, little, not they call them divas, and that's because they're using an old terminology and not really having any modern words to explain these little elemental nature spirit beings that are composing your etheric field and that are part of the entire planet on that level. And this is where we need to get it out of the distortion planes and into what we call the biofield, where you begin to learn, work with the code system of it and the information system of it, and where you begin to understand the energy units and what they actually are and clearing them out of all of these etheric field entities that are what we call lunar petris and that goes back to an old Hindu language or Tibetan language probably is because Bailey is, is kind of having her, the, the information she get from is uh, from uh, an ascended master that typically present themselves as going back to, to Tibet and some of the teaching systems that goes with what we understand as the Kala Chakra system. Okay, so with, <laughs> with a little bit of background on that one, aside also the astral plane, what is that made of? It, it's made up of elemental beings. It's made up of certain fire beings that typically goes with some reptoid energies and some merged into different forms of, of life forms that used to exist here. So when we begin to 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 tear these things apart and the mental field holds a high level of reptoid uh, energies and genetics and, and tear this one apart, you go into the book Terology. This is why I wrote it the way I did. So instead of saying biofield, etheric field, I call it the insectoid level. Instead of calling it the astral plane, this is where the avian uh, races are typically operating through and they're using the emotional field to, to, to put in their parasitic entities that links up to technologies from where they can get what they need, including the base program and the cubes that are controlling the base program, which you also get in both the souls of humanity as well as in the book Terology. And then you go into the, the next layer, that is the mental field, which is typically reptoid, Syrian B types of genetics. Or there could be Syrian A that typically makes people more spiritually oriented. The Syrian Bs make people more scientifically oriented. And the different races that are collaborating with the ones that have engineered these fields and what they have put in of code systems and their genetic uh, composition that is creating these fields. And you can see glimpses of that in, in cosmic uh, a tea trees on cosmic fire that is part of Bailey, the Alice A. Bailey material. It's, it's very occult. It's very um, difficult to look behind what is actually being said there because the one that gave Bailey her material was all about cloaking things and only the ones that had ears to hear with and eyes to see with and understood it would be able to read these books and then it were kept as a secret for the rest that would then just be plunged into the distortion field in their own creations creating all sorts of astral shells and distorted entities and whatever that would then consume them if they tried to begin working with this without having the correct level of knowledge and being being the correct lineage. So that was a protective system and that's why it's so severely occult and difficult to chew your way through and will make absolutely no sense for the most, most of you. But if we take the Hands of Light and Barbara and Brandon and many of those of you out there that are still using these healing systems, you need to begin to really look into, okay, what is the etheric field? What is it made of? And that's why I'm referring to the Baylor material, because there you'll begin to understand that they are created of different elemental beings, of little entities, of little things that belong to something and somewhere, some race that have come from some other stellar system, a different type of humanoids or the regressed races as well as the emotional field, as I talked about, that is going with the regressed avian races and the mental field that goes with the regressed um, um, the reptoid races and then the, the form itself, the structure as you live in the organic matter, which is part of the hybrid project that goes back to what um, 
was originally created under what we could call the repressed races 15,000 years ago, but has been altered due to the, 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 the grace that have come in from the Orion system of what they needed to create and produce and has created their lineages going back and forth in time and these kind of things. Again, this is these are difficult matters, including the new order of the ages and the solar system nations that are part of future humanity that have come back in time and are then also altering the human DNA because the futures they come from, whatever we understand as our solar system are plunged into a darkness that is beyond any level of horror. It's literally completely sucked into the dark worlds and the lost worlds and whatever's going on there. So that's the that's the fight that we are having to avoid this from happening. And we came very, very close uh, 100 years ago and, and they have then come back because what grew out of what happened 100 years ago and, and led to what we understand almost the, the Third World War in the 1950s where then they came back from the future to prevent that. So that's the that's the grace because they came back as grace. That's the ones that have been make, making sure that that uh, whatever was built of atom bombs and nuclear bombs have been, been controlled. Whatever military has been going on has been controlled and all of these kind of things so that you must also understand that there's a whole other dynamic going on that makes it kind of these are not grays from other systems these are grays from huge future humanities that have survived what this solar system would have turned into if they had not intervened and come back and changed the timelines and this is also part of their human projects and also to be seen as in kind of how do we work with the insectoids adopting them there are human forms and telling you are destroying the planet this is what it leads to these are the futures we have come from and you must stop what you're doing as well as the fight off of the 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 Orion races that have come in every hundred years that comes in as well and what they are seeding in and the, the whole kind of taking that one down and collaborating with the Niburians to make that not happen because the Niburians they have got out of their own um, connection to the dark systems and has become a new race whether we can discuss or not how the way has been uh, constructed. But when you do, and if you do work with, with self-healing, and this is where I wanted to go, and these are some of the things I'm also beginning to figure out, okay, how can I take the enormous amount of knowledge I have now and then build it into some kind of healing system that will grow out of the existing healing system that will that will uh, uh, be seen as... as um, what you call it, a complementary version of it. It will kind of say, well, we have this system that were built by the old world order spirituality. Okay, how do we go grow out of that one and into what it actually is? And, and that's where I, that's the reason why I'm looking into these kind of things. Okay, who was actually behind? What was the agenda of it? What can we take from this? And how can we adapt it into what actually is and what we need to work with so we understand that the lunar petries are not necessarily little elemental beings that looks like a fairy or whatever, but it's actually an alien race that came in during Atlantis. And what are these, uh, the genome, the, gen the genetic structure that goes with the biofield of the ones that have the lunar lineages or the lunar DNA within and then what does that, that actually mean? And are the lunar petries uh, actually lunar petries or electromagnetic energies? I will say the latter. So we know the dynamic of how that works, but what is an atom when it works within a reality field setting as in kind of creating the, the macro scale that, that creates your table, the, the lamp on your desk or the computer compared to the atoms that are in the organic vessel that, that are biological atoms that creates molecules and how do they operate and how do these fields interact with each other so that are some of the things that we need to look into as well so when you go with the whole kind of those of you just it's just become like a, a, a because you've been working with self-healing or whatever for, for so long and you're just going etheric field, astral field, mental field or whatever, begin to look into what are these fields composed of and what is their function and what are they there for and how can you adapt that into what you're actually made of, seeing it from a scientific angle and not what the theosophy created, the whole chakra system you know of with the the, the, the 
the frequency colors are created by C.W. Leadbeater, and he was part of uh, Blavatsky, the Blavatsky Company, and the reorganization of the original, um, what we call Brahmin teaching, guru teaching systems, and adapting them into a Western version where the, the frequency colors became the main part to work with that went alongside with the base program settings we have in, in the Western world and not the base program settings uh, under the different forms of regress they have in India. So we can't just say these. we can take these systems because we are not born in India. We do not hold an Indian vessel. We are not composed of the grids of the races of India. We live in the Western world. Our organic matter is composed in a different way. It's linked up to different technologies. It works in a completely different way. And that's why they tried with the frequency spectrum, which would then go in alignment with the sciences that we are now having. You have spectral analysis. You are <clears throat> defining the stars and the elements through the visual light spectrum. You are defining the elements of your body through spectral analysis, which are also the frequencies of the body. And that is due to the, the masses of people that have worked with the, the rainbow colors in their energy system, literally changing the, the collective version of these fields into match up with the frequency spectrum, which has then allowed for the military frequency network that goes with HARP, that goes with the, 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 the Hadron Colliders around the planet, that goes with the quantum sciences, which are then have en enabled them to operate and control humanity in different ways through these massive electromagnetic fields of which your Wi-Fi, the GPS, the different masts on our planet are part of that frequency network, including the internet and whatever is being broadcasted over news, the constant number sequences you are seeing on your phone, on your computer, on your watch, everything has been digitalized. So everything's our number sequences, similar to the numbers you'll find in computer programs, binary code systems that are allowing specific frequencies to be activated uh, in uh, hidden and consciously. You're constantly looking at the phone that activates the dopamine structure of your brain that goes with the learning and your reading and you are literally consuming information into your mental field through your phone and through the internet, as well as the emotional markers and, and call to action programs that are now being put out creating different waves of fear or whatever is going on to ensure that that specific Atlantean code system of 3-5 that goes with dark energy and the, the whatever was left of the Atlantean races will be amplified in the mental field as well as in the emotional field affecting the bio field in a specific way. Anyways, just summing this up so you understand that when you work with spirituality, these are typically Syrian A um, um, technologies that goes with that one even though lead beater were part of a specific group of regressed that were what we could call insectoid avian in origin. And they worked with that one to, to adapt the system into what they wanted to create. And then that was, of course, taken over and turned into ill. So I'm just saying that within the military projects, we also have factions that are actually working with the regressed and what we could call compared to the dark ones, more benevolent and onward and so forth. Again, this the different factions and whatever they are operating with. So those of you who were also part of the healing systems where you begin uh, activating stellar genetics, you also need to look into which faction were actually behind your healing education, what were going on, who were you supporting, what were your teachers, which faction did they represent when they taught you the he healing technologies. And I, I have gone through the same phase with where I uh, got my healer education. I looked at my teacher, the name, how he operated. I've been seeing, okay, that's what he was, not so good, let me clean that one out and then begin working with okay, what can I take from what I have learned and then adapt it into something that is alignment with my original uh, genetic composition with who and what I am and how I work with energy to begin the transitioning process of my own physicality. Because self-healing becomes very, very important in the work with your different fields and in the transitioning and clearing processes of these, you must understand how to self-heal 
and you must use the correct system. And technically, the only system that is correct is the one you create by you learn to communicate with your body, learning to communicate with the different fields of your body and learning to understand what it is made of, what type of genetics you must preserve and what type of genetics you must eradicate and get rid of because they don't belong there. And it's been part of different projects that's been going on using your organic vessel to, to sustain these trade programs, harvesting programs and whatever has been going on on our planet. All of that is, of course, part of uh, my the whole uh, classes uh, from the, the energy work to the psychological to the whole integration classes and whatever I will continue to work with because the basic level is now in place in the, the courses I have in, on the whole academy right now. They're technically the foundation of what we will begin when we begin doing the transition. And we must grow out of the old ways of looking at things, asking questions to everything so we get the right answers and begin the process of asking and getting the answers and understanding it and unfolding the information systems of what we are made of, what is around us and what we are part of and what we participate in and where we give our energy and how we give our energy and what we want to achieve with what we are working with. What is the goal of our existence? To learn, to develop, to progress, to develop energy into its highest functionality, to develop consciousness structure into complexity structures that are able to expand across universes so we can unfold our full capacities in whatever life form we choose to exist within and not being so restricted and narrow minded as we are within our current settings. I think that about covers what I wanted to put into this video on the 19th and then the sun is going down and it is now 6.11 so we are officially having blasted our way into the equinox and I have here given what I want to see in, in this equinox that I want humanity to wake up, I want humanity to understand who and what they are and I want humanity to work with who and what they are and then do the right choices following the highest purity rate, the highest standards and the highest progression rate of all life forms so that we can reunite in the eternal cycles as it has always been and was always meant to be and that's why I participated in the pillar project to begin with that's why I'm constantly coming back and that is why I'm fighting off evil because I want us all to succeed and the ones that can I want them to let go with honor and grace and accept their fate and accept their failures and do what they must do so they can give room for the rest of us to do the evolutionary processes that we were meant to do and that is ours to do. This is our heritage. So that is what I want to put in in this Aquinas and that is what I want to use my 2021 to achieve. And that's what I've been working for in my entire existence ever since I got exiled in the Pillar Project as it was taken over by the ones that got infected by the timeline event and turned into something completely else. I'm not done with writing the wrongs that were done at that time. I'm not done with writing the wrongs of the races that got captured in the wrong decision makings of the ones that got infected. And I'm not done with teaching the naive and the infantile avians that they must grow up, including learning the insectoids to respect territory and how to be around each other, respect their limitations and respect that they can't just consume and chew everything up. And I'm not done with fighting with the reptilians and reptiles and make them understand that honor is so much more than just taking over and consuming and selling and trading and enslaving and whatever they are doing. I will never be done with fighting for the true value systems of the true humans and the highest level of the true humanoids where we will all work for unity fields and a joint progression into the eternal fields under the ancient ones, which are built upon understanding of each other, understanding of what is the right choice to make. And so we can all move forward into higher levels of existence where we will develop more and more complex energy systems, more and more complex consciousness structures, which will allow us to meet up in joint forces and complete understanding 
of all worlds that we are part of and with that understanding work as a team work as a group to evolve all universes so they will again return to become part of the universal cycles of 